Good day, students. It's class time. I am Nakita Barnett Hamilton, and it's now time for CSEC Social Studies. This week's topic is laws relating to the family and social issues. So this week, as you can see, I wrote the topic already. It is laws relating to the family. Laws relating to the family. But let us break it up a little. When you hear the term laws, what comes to your mind? Put up your hand and tell me what comes to your mind. Yeah, police, soldier, all right, good, 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 good. Court, yes, yes, yes. But I want you for a minute to write your definition of laws. So pretend you're in CSEC exam and you're asked to define laws. What would it be? I'm giving you a few seconds to write that. Right. Mm-hmm. Laws, you don't have to take no whole of time. Put it together and, and share with me. Share with me. Jessica, oh, I like how you put up your hand, bubbling. Right. So laws, what are laws to you? Rules, rules, just any rules, sir? Rules that what? Are written, set by a country or a community that help to what? Govern behaviors. True, all right, very good, very good, very good. Now that you have written your definition, and those of you who didn't get to finish up, based on what Jessica said, it is correct, so you can now help it to coin yours, true? Good, we are here to help each other. Based on the topic two, I want you to tell me, tell me or write it, both. Two laws that you wish you could see in this country relating to the family. Tell me two things that if you had the power to implement when it concerns family, you would put it into right now. Write it. Two laws. You look around you and you see some things happening in the family in our country. Or if you've visited countries outside of the Caribbean, any experience, if you've read, what laws would you write and you want, would want them to be enacted right now? Because you see it. All right. Yes? Shakwicha, you know I'm coming for you this week. So you try to get your things together. I want to hear from you. Yes. Yeah. Your law? So something where, where mothers are beat up them picnic. But there is a law against that already. We are not supposed to abuse our children in no way, shape, or form. Y yes, there is a law. There is. Uh, yes? Okay, Simone. Fathers must take care of them picnic. There is a law. There is a law. Yes, yes. And I am sure if not, at least two of you would have heard mommy saying, you know, I had to take daddy to court to get some money. There are laws that are implemented to protect the family. All right. Now, the objectives for today's lesson. One, I want you to be, be able to explain the importance of laws to protect the family. Why do we need laws to protect us as people? Now, I also want you to be able to analyze laws relating to Caribbean children. We're going to analyze. And remember now, analyzing requires a different level of skill. You have to think deep, you have to write deep, and we have to see that you understand what you are about. Good? It's not surface thinking. I also want you to be able to construct two laws relating to the family. And ta-da, some of you would have done that already because I allowed you to do that at the beginning of the class. True? Good. And you're going to fine tune it for next class. I also want you to examine how social issues affect the family. We're going to get into that a little right after we finish with laws relating to the family and also be willing to respect the implementation of laws. I know some of us don't like rules. We don't like nobody tell you anything, but laws are important. Now, why do we need laws? Why do we need laws? And think about us in this class here, first of all. If we did not have class monitors, if we did not have our prefects and sub-prefects, and you know, Jason, that is the head boy. If we did not have these structures in place and, and systems to help guide 
you as, as, as students and us too as teachers because we are governed by a set of rules. What would happen? Let us take it basic first. What would happen in this very class? You couldn't talk to me, miss. Ah, true. I know it. Couldn't speak to you because you know that if you're rude, then there are, that C word, consequences. Very good, very good, very good. So in essence, we need laws because laws help to create order, order. And everybody, you know, them likes the Jamaican people unruly by nature. And if we have laws and we still behave contrary to, can you imagine if we didn't have those? Hmm. Right. So it's the same thing for the family. We have laws because we want to ensure that we protect the family. We protect its members. Right? Now, I'm quickly going to read this. Laws serve to protect the interests of family members. And we said that earlier, don't? Yes. Especially children who were once considered as illegitimate members. Look at that word. Make sure to underline it. We would have done this when we were looking at functions of the family, types of family. You remember that? All right. Now, when we say illegitimate, Tevin, tell me what you mean by that. Illegitimate. It no legal. All right. Very good. So in essence, there were some children that were considered illegitimate according to law. Good. So laws had to be coined to help everybody, every child to get equal opportunity. So can somebody remind me though, what were the circumstances under which a child could be considered illegitimate? What were the the circumstances uh, yeah born out of wedlock very good so your parents were not married i remember we we're discussing and we asked persons to raise their hand and my hand went up good good like high high like a kite because i would have been considered an illegitimate child my parents did not have me in wedlock and as such because there were laws that would pretty much ostracize me I wouldn't get any benefits. So we want to say thank you to our forefathers who saw it fit to shift these laws so everybody can get equal opportunities. Very good. So and it was under those grounds that Caribbean government saw it fit to just ensure that children could get equal status, especially in regards to inheritance. Very good. Following me so far? Are you following me? Good, all right, okay, no, I'm not leaving anybody behind. Pee, pee, cluck, cluck, we're getting there. All right, now, there are specific laws that are set for children. And you may be asking, but Miss Waya, teach me about laws and children. Outside of the fact that it is in the CSEC syllabus for social studies, remember, and every week I will say this, social studies is one that is life driven. Some of you may want to become lawyers, but even if you don't want to be a lawyer, you must understand the rights. You are a citizen of this country. You may be able to help your uncle, auntie, sister, brother, somebody. So knowledge never hurts. All right. So children and the law. Now, remember we said that there are a set of children that would be considered illegitimate. And I think with that, you had some children who were neglected, then put aside, outcast. Their well-being was under threat, right? With that, the government in the Caribbean said, no, these are, these are souls, these are children that need to be nourished. As a matter of fact, they are the future. They are the future. Can we do something to help protect our future? Can we do something to help protect our region? It was that that led Jamaica, Antigua, and Barbuda first to initiate what we would call the Child Care and Protection Act in 2003. Now, this act seeks to protect children against every kind of abuse and wrong treatment. Right. And I know abuse and, and mistreatment can be a sensitive topic, especially for for some of you right here. Right. And I don't want you to to feel like you are nobody because you, you have, you've gone through some traumatic experiences that were beyond your control. 
right? And perhaps some of you are saying, then where was the law when I was going through all of this, right? Perhaps the, nobody reported it, so you could not get the protection that you needed. Is that true? However, you know now. You went through it. You may have some, some persons in your community that are going through it. Remember, the Child Care and Protection Act is there to defend the welfare of every child. We, regardless of where you're from, that act seeks to protect. That act seeks to ensure that every child's right is protected. Good? All right. Are you following me so far? Following me? All right. Tell me when the Child Care and Protection Act was instituted. Remind, 2009? Three. Very good. Well done. Also, which countries did we say initiated this act? Jamaica and Antigua and Barbuda. Very good. And when you're writing these things, you remember now we are analyzing the acts that were were, were instituted to protect children. So bear that in mind and you're going to, you would write the purpose of this act, right? Don't forget. All right, the next act we're gonna be looking at is the Maintenance Act. We're not gonna be reading right now. I want you to talk to me. Talk to me about the Maintenance Act and, and why would the government see it fit to implement or pass a law that has to do with maintenance. Shouldn't every parent just want to care of them children? Hmm? Speak to me, why? Oh, we have some fathers where run left them. But remember now, though the fathers statistically are the ones absent from the homes, we have mothers too who neglect. Is that true? Yes. So it, we, it is fair to say that we have parents who refuse to take care of their children. Yes? All right. And because of that, sometimes, you know, so you cannot get it by will. My granny would say, get it by force. So you know the law is there. And in the event that you refuse to do your duty, the laws are there to try and ensure that whoever is taking care of the child, whichever parent or whichever guardian, they can get some support, right? True, because you sitting in front of me, you, oh, no, 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 easy to take care of, right? Money is needed. Good, good. All right, so let us now read what I have here. And based on what I have here, I want you to tell me if you agree with it or if there is anything that you would add to it. So the Maintenance Act, Maintenance Act rather, most Caribbean countries have put in place Maintenance Act to protect the well-being of the children. And pretty much that's what we said. This act is designed to ensure that the parents or guardians maintain the children who are under the age of what? So who deserve to get maintained right now? May I have any 20 year old in here? No, 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 no. 17, 16. And we may have one close to 18. You're going there. All right, so you should be taken care of by your parents. Very good. Now the Maintenance Act also ensures that single parents receive some financial support. That's what we were saying earlier, right? So no, 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 do good, all right? And in the event that one parent really and truly can't carry out the responsibility, the other parent is fit and able to, they should help. If it is that they fail to carry out their duty, the family court is there to intervene and order them to do so. Order them to maintain the child or children. Now, what if them decide, say, oh, me a bad man or me a bad girl. Me no me, me me want nobody to talk to me. What can happen? Lock them up, miss. Yes, they can be imprisoned. So, it is a process. I think the court would order you to, to pay the back money first. They would order you to follow up a, a set of protocols. But if you continue to breach it, better bear in mind that police is going to come for you and you are going to go in jail. And I would never want any of my young men doing that. It would be a shame on you to know that police is going to lock you because you refuse to take care of your child. Your child mm, couldn't work out. So make sure that you 
Anything that is legal that you have to do to take care of your child when you get there, make sure you do it. Roger that. Very good. Now, careless acts undertaken by parents. So perhaps, you know, we have some girls where them like go party and you know them after art and the child is, is underage. Leave the child into the house and gone, gone, gallivant. Police find out what must happen to them. Lock them up. Good. You have to take care of your children. And that, the maintenance act speaks to that explicitly. Them now go around it. You cannot maintain your child, suffer the consequences. Otherwise, give the child up for adoption. Allow somebody to take care of the child so they can get the best care they deserve. Truth? Good. We're understanding the maintenance act. And the, all right, good, good, good. Now, laws relating to inheritance. Inheritance, no one would like to say, oh, me no one, no dead left, nothing. No, but if your parents worked so hard for you to get it, you must get it. They want a better life for you, right? So inheritance, it is property or money which is passed on from a dead person to his or her beneficiary. So God forbid, and I know some persons would have lost their mother or father, sorry, but God forbid persons in here would lose anyone, no. You want to know that you are able to benefit from their hard work, right? Now, what are some of the things that you have to put in place to make sure that you are a beneficiary of this? You have to write a what? Jason? You have to write a will. Will. So tell me now what is a will, Jason? Uh, good. All right. So your will is pretty much your desires or, or your wishes that are written out. It's a legal document. So in the event that something happens, death, then they know how to split what they have. Truth? Good. All right. And this is the Succession Act deals with matters relating to inheritance. So we looked at Child Care Protection Act, we looked at um, the Maintenance Act and Succession Act. So this act was put in place to ensure that even children born out of wedlock would benefit. Because remember now, no, if you weren't born in wedlock, they don't think you deserve anything. All if it's your own parents, they would take it to the government. Good? But this act defended the right of every child following me all right i know that you're following me now here are the circumstances under which inheritance of property or rights could be claimed let us read them together as a class as a matter of fact i'm going to take this row first so we're going to read together we have the points there let us go where the deceased person do not leave a will you do what one the surviving spouse is entitled to the entire property if there is no child or children or next of kin. Good. Row two, come with me. The surviving spouse is entitled to two-thirds of the property if the deceased leaves behind a child who would receive the remainder of the property. We understand those things already, right? Good. Come on now, row three. If there is more than one child, the spouse will receive one third of the property and the remainder divided equally among the children. Very good. I think that is self-explanatory. We understand that. Though I look at maths here and there, but we get it. All right. Now, laws relating to marriage and divorce. Remember, divorce, no, it is very legal. A marriage is legal, and because it's legal, you have to go through a legal process to end it if you want. Hence, there are laws binding these two, marriage and divorce. Let us get into the meat of the matter. And we're going to pick up with the other rules as we read. And if you have any questions as we go along, raise your hand. Raise your hand. Good. I think these are pretty straightforward, so we're going to read and then go ahead. Yes, come row four, row five, we're at, right? Yes, row five. The ground for divorce was usually based on common acts such as infidelity. What is another word for infidelity? 
Bone, cheating, all right? <laughs> Abuse, desertion. So we know these were the common things. However, amendments have abolished these grounds and allow for partners to show evidence in court that the marriage is broken and irrevertible. So as long as you can show proof, then it's pretty much you can divorce for anything, right? And I hope that when you get married, you're going to stay married. Right, let us continue. Row six, good. A divorce will be granted if the partners provide proof to the court that they have been living separate lives for a continuous period of not less than 12 months before the date of filing the application for the divorce. So how many months you must live apart? 12 months. Months. Okay, you can't just decide, so oh, me just left the man and I am going to file for a divorce. Of course, going to say no. Next thing now, final row, come up with me. The court will not listen to cases that profile partners who have been married for less than two years and have not made extensive use of marriage counseling in an attempt to reconcile differences. So what is, the, what is happening here? The court wants to make sure that you try everything. They're not going to just give you a divorce decree to say it's over without you exploring all the options to resolve the conflict that, ex, that, that, um, that is in the marriage. You want to make sure that you try everything. And hence, there are laws relating to marriage and divorce. Following me? Oh, you never know that. Yes, 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 yes. So you, yeah, I like how your face look like, no, like I say, yes, I didn't know these well. I'm happy that you're learning. I am really happy that you're learning, right? Now, let us continue to reading, re continue reading. We're going to go back to, to row one, right? Now, divorce signals the separation of a union. We know that. It is a legal ending of a union. However, Right? Where the separation involves both parties gone. So, right? You have to know that there are certain clauses that still bind them together. For example, if one party is not able to take care of themselves, can't work because of physical, psychological, or mental conditions, then the party, <laughs> husband or wife, will still have a responsibility to take care of their ex spouse. Yes, still there about e. Yes, yes, they are still binding things. And also, if the children are there, you get divorced, but the children should be taken care of. Understand that? Good, good. All right. Now we're gonna look at summary for reasons for laws relating to the family. Why do we need laws relating to the family? Again, for justice. We want justice. Justice for for children like you and perhaps my friend there, Jessica. J Jessica, mm -hmm. you know that you and I weren't born in wedlock, right? Should it be that we're discriminated? No. So the laws are there to help us get justice, to get what we deserve, inheritance to be maintained. The laws are also there to ensure that there is cooperation uh, among family members, because some of us, our ways, we can be a little tegreg like So the laws now have to intervene to help guide how we behave. Perhaps we have to stay this distance from that one or that, but it's for our best interest so we don't end up killing each other. The laws also allow us to have freedom and to have choice as family members, right? So we know that we are covered. And the last one, it, it helps with development or change. Because remember earlier I was saying the laws were there, but only for those born in wedlock. Hence, with development and change, it became inclusive to all of us. Truth? All right, any questions so far? We're not rushing it, you know. We're not rushing it. If you have any questions, let us know. I prefer pause right here to make sure that you learn. Any questions? No. All right, good. However, I have some questions for you. Let's recap. So, 
again, why do we need laws relating to the family? And I pretty much gave you the answers to that a while ago, so I'm not going to go to that one. Let us look at what is the name of the act that focuses on protecting children, that general act. Uh, mm, Justin, Child Care and Protection Act. Very good. Now, Explain the difference between the Maintenance and Succession Act. And pay attention to these terms. Explain it means that you have to give more, right? And you're saying the difference. Speak with me. Um, I'm going to go with Latoya. Tell me. What do you mean in a member? I don't understand. Come. Let us come with me. When we say Maintenance Act, what we mean by that? All right, to take care of the child, very good. So in essence, Maintenance Act is there to ensure that the parents take care of the child or children. All right, and then the Succession Act. Somebody help her out, please, because I don't know what she's telling me, but she don't remember. Come, tell her, let she tell me. Good. Deals with inheritance, very good. So you would put that in a sentence, both of them, and say Maintenance Act is that, 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 while succession act is that, that, that. Right, write that. And state two laws relating to marriage and divorce. You remember any of them? If you are married for under a year, you must, very good, get counseling first. And you must be living 12 months apart before the court considers giving a divorce. Clap yourselves, clap yourselves. Oh my God, you guys are, are doing good. You are doing good. And even, all right, those who feel like them could bother, I see you're catching up. I see your face livelying up and, and we're on a roll. All right? Now, we want to transition a little into social issues. We're not going to cover it all today, but we have to touch on it, right? And when we touch on social issues, I'm just whetting your appetite so you can go and do some more research. And when we gather for class again, we dig a little deeper, right? Now, all the laws relating to the family, and so it's processed and cemented. Have your notes? Have your notes. All right, good, good. Social issue. And you're going to see now that there is a relation with social issues and the family and how social issues can affect the family, right? Now, what is a social issue? What is a social issue? You would have learned this in grade nine, so don't bother think I am telling you all again. So we're recapping it. A social issue can be best described as any condition that is widespread and conflicts with the norms and values of the society. I want you to underline some, a few words there with me. So, it's a condition that is widespread. Underline that. So, it cannot be something that affects your household alone. Truth? Good. And then we're going over to underline now, or do you like a scrolly, scrolly round? Conflicts with the norms and values of the society. So a, a social issue happens on a wide scale. It is widespread. And it conflicts with the values and the norms of the society. What comes to your mind when you hear that? Some things that just happen. Crime. Ah, hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it. Very good, very good. And this condition may affect us directly or indirectly. Directly or indirectly indirectly it don't have to be you but by extension it affects all of us and here i'm um, jason just said crime you may not have been affected directly by somebody killing you your 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 family member or stealing from you any act of crime and violence right however when they do that it affects the community, it affects the country, and as such, it affects us. Remember our little taxpayer money that could be used for other things? We're now using it to combat things that are just not necessary. Why don't we just behave ourselves, right? Good. Let us look now at the characteristics of a social issue. Good. 
it conflicts, as we said, with norms, values of society. So from it conflicts with the norms and values of society, you know that it is an issue. A social one, not just any personal issue that you have with your friend. It conflicts. And what are some of the things that we could do that conflicts with the, the norms and values of society? Of course, we heard crime and violence, and, and that goes against what we stand for. We should value life. We should value each other's property. Therefore, that conflicts with the norms and values of society. When we don't seek to honor our parents and our elders, when we, we breach family security, when we go against equality, loyalty, and friendship, when we do that, and, and there are different issues that could cause these things to conflict with norms and values of society, you will see that it affects us on a wide scale. It does, right? Another characteristic is that it affects a large number of people directly or indirectly. So some of us see things happening in our community and we don't want to speak about it because it is not at your doorstep. But bear in mind that it affects all of us, right? And the last characteristic of a social issue is that it is difficult to solve. It is. Why you think them can't solve crime yet? Why you think so? It is hard and it takes collective effort. It takes you, like I don't like to say, be an informer. Well, yes, being an informer, it takes the police force not being corrupt. It takes the government doing what they are supposed to do to ensure that this social issue is not affecting us as great, right? So these are the characteristics. We're going to wrap up today with looking at examples of social issues. Mm -hmm. And I, I know, I know that. Let us go. I'm going to ask, hmm, who should I ask to read for me now? Odin, come, read. I want, I, I want you to read the 10 of them. There's nothing here, so just read all of them. One, child abuse, good. Domestic violence, we know that what that is, don't, right? Incest, juvenile delinquency, poverty, sexually transmitted diseases, street children, substance abuse, suicide, teenage pregnancy. Very good, very good. So those are the examples of social issues that we have plaguing us as a Caribbean people, not only Jamaica, they are outside of the Caribbean, yes, but this is our focus. And we will break them down bit by bit before um, we end this unit, right? Now, the family and social issues. How does social issue affect the family? The truth is, all of us belong to a family. All of us. And when we do something that is contrary to the norms and values of society, it affects relationships within the family. And it causes conflict. It also causes alienation of other members of society. So they scorn you, they discriminate you, right? We also can see that if you lose the main breadwinner in your family because of crime, desertion, imprisonment, or death, it affects you. Because the person that used to bring the money, it, it is no longer there. The, and it, it causes pain and hurt. It can also send you into family, to financial depression. And finally, it allows the younger per children or younger persons in the family to be led astray. Truth? Very good. 